So in this video, I want to answer a question I got in a YouTube comment that I thought was interesting. So the question is basically, can I use MMC and RFS with a composite position? So can you have the upper segment be a, regardless of feature size and the lower segment be at maximum material condition? So let's draw that out. I've got an example here. We got a block with two holes in it. I've made this surface, datum A. This is going to be a feature of size datum, the center of the part. And then this edge is going to be datum C. And we're going to do our datum reference frame to A, B, and C. Just uh, imagine there's basic dimensions coming from the datums in this case. So what I've drawn here is a composite position frame. We know it's composite because there's only one uh, position symbol in there. We're going a half inch diameter tolerance zone to A, B, and C. So that's what locates the pattern. And then we're doing 20 thousandths, the pattern to itself within that larger tolerance zone and oriented to datums A and B. Recall that the lower segment of the composite position frame doesn't control translation to the datums. It's just the basic dimension within the pattern and the orientation to those datums. Now, these are pretty large tolerances, but it's really just for instructional purposes to show you something here. Right now, they're both at regardless of feature size, but what would happen if I do both at maximum material condition well, what we actually get here, and this is another question I've gotten before, is a negative virtual condition for the upper segment. So here I'll draw the math real quick. The virtual condition for an internal feature is going to be the maximum material condition minus the geometric tolerance. Now, normally this results in a, a positive number that you could use for a gauge, but in this case, the position tolerance is so large that you're going to get a negative virtual condition. This, you know, obviously it's impossible to make a gauge to a negative number, so we can't inspect this with the surface method. And I made a video about that a little bit ago, but basically the surface method is just checking the boundary with some physical gauge. We have to check this with what's known as the axis or the resolved geometry method, which means we need to find the unrelated actual mating envelope, which is usually just a gauge pin, right? The largest gauge pin that could fit in this hole. We find the axis of that, and we're going to see if it's within this tolerance zone. Now, we still get something from the MMC in this case, the maximum material condition. What we get is bonus tolerance. Well, in this case, our total size tolerance is 40 thousandths, so our bonus tolerance is 40 thousandths. It doesn't make too much sense if you have a half inch of tolerance to add in 40 thousandths of bonus tolerance, right? It, it just proportionally, it, it, you, you already have so much tolerance that bonus tolerance probably isn't going to help very much. Now, there's not that many situations where you'd give something a half inch of tolerance, but it could come up. You might need uh, you know, a part a casting or something with some holes that are just there for the purposes of lightning, right? Just drilling, Swiss cheesing something, but you got to put some tolerance on it so you, you make it rather large. So we could essentially get rid of that maximum material condition, and we're not really losing much in, in terms of the tolerancing scheme here. It's really just losing 40,000 bonus tolerance, but we still have a half inch of regular tolerance. So let me get rid of this. Right. Now, we would check that to the datums, just like we would you know, position at RFS. We put gauge pins in, and we're measuring to our datums on the part, whatever kind of setup we use. Now, the lower one does make more sense to have the maximum material condition. In this one, we're going to get a positive virtual condition. We're going to end up with 0.46, and that's something we could make a gauge for. 
So in this case, and for a lot of composite positions, right, the idea is you have a pattern of holes and you're mounting something to it. So you want to make sure that pattern is controlled very closely to itself. Uh, I always use the light switch example, right? If you drill two holes in the wall for a light switch, those holes need to be controlled closer to each other than they do to the floor, right? If a light switch is an inch high or an inch low, you know, besides whoever the code guy is going to tell you it's too high or too low to the whatever city code, it really doesn't matter as far as functionality. But if those two holes are an inch apart, your light switch cover is not going to fit. So in this case, and this is legal uh, according to ASME, you could have, you know, long story short, I mean, that's long story long, RFS for the upper and then MMC for the lower, and it's still a totally inspectable part. Uh, the idea is they're separate requirements. You have to verify both to achieve the, uh, the requirements here. The lower one could be a, a simple gauge with two pins that are set whatever this basic dimension is apart at the virtual condition. You know, the pins would be set at the virtual condition. Pretty straightforward. So the answer is, you know, RFS is, you can mix RFS and uh, MMC. Now, what you can't do, and this is explicit, is mix your material boundaries. So if you're going A, B, C, all, well, you know, A and C are, si or, you know, don't have size, they're surfaces, they can't have a material condition. But B here can have a material condition. So if you use B in the top at RMB, regardless material boundary, you must use it at regardless of material boundary in the lower. Now, is it conceivable that they could be different? Yeah, probably, maybe, but the ASME standard is pretty strict about this. It says they have to be the same uh, datum references, same order, same material conditions for composite. If you use two single segment, you can mix and match a little bit more, but that's a totally different can of worms that I'm not going to get into in this particular video. But that's essentially it. Uh, negative virtual condition, I know I've got questions about that. You know, you have to use the uh, resolve geometry or axis method to measure that. And then yes, you can mix and match the RFS and uh, MMB. RFS and MM, uh, MMC, but you cannot mix and match the material conditions. So that's it for this video. Uh, if you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe and leave a comment down below.